Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I am excited and nervous to do this video. I said I was going to do this video because it's going to help me uh, uh, air out some of the problems that I have with the ways that I speak and uh, correct some of my mistakes on stream, but also to highlight some of you guys out there in the chat. And this is, I am going to do my best to go over uh, uh, some of the comments. I, I should say some because you guys have been commenting a lot and I didn't realize that. I did not realize the level of support that I had and I am literally having to shift like on my toes right now to, <laughs> to figure out how to do this. So there's going to be some cuts and some edits in this video. Hopefully you guys don't mind the cuts and the edits, but I found out that when I'm just sitting here scrolling through all your guys' comments, it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to... We're going to go for broke. I'm going to do what I usually do. I don't script anything. I generally don't plan because... That's how I have four kids, and I love the hell out of them, so I figure if I don't plan in my videos, I'll love the hell out of them, too. But before we get into all that, my wife loves me. And that is what she just bought for me. She found an artist, and that is going to go here. Yep, it's going to go right there. Yep, yep, yep. Getting a frame tomorrow. My wife loves me. And hopefully, you have somebody in your life that loves you as much as my wife loves me. And before I continue anything with that thought or make jokes, let's get into this, because I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Let's go. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. All right, Kiko man. Kiko man says, loved your video, but just wanted to note... That while it came up in my search results, your title threw me off. What's the point? Threw me off is this to say you dismissed it. Just some feedback. This was on the uh, Eric July, the Ripperverse. Doesn't matter. You can see it over there. And I do suck at doing titles. Um, and I always try to think about like some crafty way to do a title to draw people in. And uh, I did respond to Kiko Mama. I said, you know, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I will also work on better titles. I've always been bad at them. And uh, since this, it's been about a week, and I've had time to, to think about this, this subject. And I go, you know, maybe if I title my videos in a way that'll get, like, the rage clicks off the bat, people will understand that when I say things like, what's the point? I'm attacking it in a different way. Now, that's asking a lot of people to be like, hey, accept my personality as being stupid. But I'm also asking you to accept my personality as being stupid. But I'm not going to lie. I think that what's the point? I think that's what drew a lot of people into the channel. And so I think trying to do that, like, or I don't know. I don't know. It was organic. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't try to do it again. Maybe all's well that ends well and what's good is good and just leave it. I don't know. I got to figure that out. All right. Let's go here to uh, Kikomon commented there. And I did correct this. And actually a lot of people commented this as well. And this was something that I had to make a correction video about was the crowdfunding aspect of everything. So, um, well, I want to highlight some other people for that, but Kiko Mon, awesome. I appreciate you commenting and getting involved in the conversation. We've got Blayan over here. Uh, not crowdfunded. Absolutely not crowdfunded. I, I had to do a video of that. Blayan came in, which I read that name and I was like, Blayan. I was like, why does that? I was like, wait, is he saying Black Saiyan? I think that's what he was saying. Blayan, if you watch this. Shout out, man. Thank you for checking out the channel and thank you for dedicating some time to it. Uh, scrolling, uh, Rodney Johnson says he's not crowdfunded. Yep, he is not. Absolutely, and I got that wrong. Um, all right. Why would a libertarian want more government? This was highborn. Oh, boy, I got a lot of people mad at me for how I said this. This was all so in my correction video. I wasn't saying that libertarians want more government than we currently have now. I was saying that libertarians want more government than uh, an anarcho-capitalist would want because anarcho-capitalism is rooted in 
uh, anarchism. A lot of people keep saying that it's rooted in libertarianism. That's not correct. That is uh, a newer notion. Uh, libertarianism has always been about small government for the people and all that stuff. Uh, it's a movement that started back in the 1790s. The first libertarians, or people to be called libertarians, were actually the French in the French Revolution in the 19 or in the 1790s, 1791. It was right around the ratification of the Constitution, um, and they were actually somewhat inspired by, and actually a lot of people in the world were inspired by what our founding fathers did. So that's kind of where libertarianism began. Uh, some philosophers, including like Ayn Rand and a few others uh, in the 20th century. Sorry, I need to make sure that I process this properly. Uh, some of those philosophers in the 20th century decided to inject different ideas into what could be considered libertarian. But ultimately, I think what they did is they actually muddied up the waters about what an actual libertarian is. And I say that as somebody who has literally pretty much believed these principles since I was like, well, my parents raised me with them. And I, I didn't deviate and go insane to the left side. You know, oh, you know, you, you got to have you got to be a lefty when you're young. No. Um, but the, um, but the idea here is that, um, as the waters got muddied up with libertarianism, like I've never met, it's, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, if you put a hundred libertarian libertarians in a room, not one of them is going to agree on what libertarianism is. Um, I tend to go with the definition, the classical definition of limited government. I actually pulled up definitions of the word to look into it. And it is people who fight uh, for liberty, sometimes uh, very extremely, and people who want limited government and across a couple of different areas that seem to be the common thread through the actual definitions. And I literally Googled the word. Um, I actually, and that inspired me to actually, my wife and I are going to be buying some older dictionaries before some of this historical revisionism came in. And we're going to have dictionaries in the house because, you know, we, uh, I believe in homeschooling, we homeschool our kids. And I want them to, one, look up stuff in a dictionary like I used to, and two, fall in love with looking things up in a dictionary. Um, I think that if you're arguing a term and you say, no, this term means this, uh, look up the definition. Because if the definition is contrary to what you're saying it is, then you are injecting uh, something that you... Uh, may personally believe or may personally be tacking on to that word that that word may not actually encompass. So that's a very long explanation, but essentially that's what I'm saying is libertarians and ANCAPs are different. They're fighting for goals in the same direction, but essentially when libertarians stop and they go, yep, we're good to governments the way that we want it to be, ANCAPs are going to keep going and say, no, screw your government, we want less. So that's what I was saying there. All right, off to the next one. All right, this one here from Drew Chamberlain, also from Does This Matter. I'm averse to, buzz, to buzzwords, but parallel economy is something I identify with. That Yu-Gi-Oh hardback mat on your wall represents one such economy. Yu-Gi-Oh is one of the few borderline old guard products that still lets you take uh, history with you into the future and escape the trappings of an overly rigid formatting of the entire world product your thoughts on being a student of mythos spoke to me killer video i think i'm going to get cover c signed and a to read maybe the dokumon cards also because i'm a sucker for that stuff this and uh we started talking about the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff back here on the wall and actually since then so this one does not have uh any cards in it but my wife i told her about this exchange and my wife was like oh you're gonna be really happy with this gift i bought you then and i was like what the hell and this literally shows up a few days later so my wife bought me that and for people out there um let's see that one this one still has the cards but it i lost the plastic that holds the cards but for people who are like you know the other ones don't have the cards you don't have okay so this one doesn't have the plastic but it does have all of the original cards that came with the deck here this inspired so this is Stupid freaking light. Oh. The doggo was under my foot. So this is there. And then this... Because I kept all the cards. Oh, God. And maybe I'll show these off a little later. But there's that. And then this whole baggie here is the cards. I didn't have sleeves or anything to put these ones in. And I also didn't have the plastic. And so I just be very, very careful when I move this thing. And make sure that the cards are protected though you have been that way for about 20 years so for drew chamberlain if you're still checking out the channel that's for you i appreciate the conversation about all the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff that was really fun 
I had a blast with that. So that was, that was a great time. Oh, and by the way, for those of you wondering, like in the beginning of the video, why my wife got me a Vegeta, because like Vegeta is literally the best character in Dragon Ball Z. Um, if you think it's Goku, you're fucking wrong. Fight me. All right, this one here, I was very, very humbled to see. From Charles Austin, you just earned a sub for me, my friend. Well-spoken analysis of the of why the Ripperverse exists and what it will do for those of us who are insanely tired of getting politics instead of good, well-written story. Thank you so much, Charles Austin. Um, this all took off in a way that I, I didn't expect it. Like, the most we've ever had, like generally our videos get anywhere from like 20 to like 40 views and like a comment if we're lucky and that is not the case here you guys just blew it up and so that's why I'm doing this so I can highlight you guys so Charles Austin thank you so much point out this one too and like I said I'm not covering all of them I'm just covering some of them but uh, because there's a lot to go through and again there's going to be edits I'm sorry but all right Garcia, 15 legend, or XV, but it's 15. Garcia, 15. Sorry, sir, I had to do a thorough skim research that apparently libertarians want limited government. Not more from what I've been reading. Had to use Bing because I don't trust Google in what I need to look up for, but I could be highly mistaken. Looked up the definition, some links and articles to get a better and he said guessed, but he meant guess. Garcia 15 Legend, I responded to you somewhat snarkily here. And I apologize because you came back and you gave me another chance. And you commented on further videos. And even today you commented as well. And to that I want to say thank you. Because you didn't just drop a comment and bounce. Uh, you, you came back and you gave me another chance uh, to clarify what I was saying about uh, libertarianism or attempting to say, which I, I butchered. I butchered in that video. It was very bad. So Garcia 15 legend. Legend. Ari, thank you so much. Ben Hustlin, good video player. You did a really good job articulating everything, even with some points not being quite focused. And your main point of his comic book being a beacon for people who miss the old school comics really shined through. Thank you so much, Ben Hustlin. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and like I said, guys, I'm just going through. Uh, there are definitely some ones that I, I, I really remember because I was like, wait a minute, I have to think about this. And uh, we'll be getting to more of those, but no, I just, as though, as I scroll through, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. And so I want to point out some of these other people as well, because they are all the reason that I'm doing this. All right. This one was really fun. And I know I said that I would get to ones where I was, I was challenged on it and I, I do intend to, and I absolutely do intend to. Um, this one was <laughs> Gabe Logan or Gabe. I don't know. Gabe or Gabe? I don't know. Gabe Logan. I'm going to go with Gabe Logan. I like your style. Happy you've been putting my algorithm now for no apparent reason and just for fun. I'm trying to be the 200th member. We'll see if I can make it happen. Only seven to go. Cheers. We are at 300 now because of all of you out there. And Gabe had a power outage and uh, came back and was like, hey, I had a power outage, but I'm 202. Ah, uh, <laughs> and said he was going to be a crazy fan about it. So hopefully one of these days, Gabe doesn't show up on my front doorstep naked with a bouquet of flowers. That would be disturbing. He said he was going to be a super fan or something like that. I don't know. We'll get to that comment. Gabe, don't show up on my doorstep naked with flowers. That would be funny, but also, also weird. But I guess if the flowers just said 202 on them, it wouldn't be that weird. Like, oh, hey. You're, oh, yeah. Huh? Come in for a beer. No, I probably wouldn't do that. Probably have a beer outside with you. All right. Anyway, let's keep going. Here is exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Had an electricity shutdown in my area. I did miss 200 mark, but I am fan 202. I repeat, you will now remember me as your 202 fanatic. And I think that's fantastic. Much love. Catch you later. He might show up on my front doorstep naked with a bouquet of flowers that says 202 on it. We'll see.
All right, the Biv, I hope you ordered a Ripiverse poster for your nerd wall. I did not. I have uh, the signed copy, which is A. I think I have a signed copy of A. I don't know. My wife ordered it for me because my wife loves me. Going over here next to the Vegeta poster where it belongs. Vegeta is the best Dragon Ball Z character. Uh, well, there's two comments in here. So let's, uh, uh, wasn't sure where you were going with this. And this is Critical Wit. Critical Wit wasn't sure where you were going with this. But you pulled me in by the end good video that was on the Does This Matter video. 2.5 million reasons what the point is and counting. Stay salty. Plop. Pill. I'm not salty. <laughs> But I love when people read the video title, they come in, they leave a comment, and they bounce, and they don't see the... Now, I'm not sure if he was saying this to me or saying this to, like, the world out there. So, if I am provided context from Plop Pill, and he goes, no, dude, I was saying all the crazies out there, totally fine with it. Otherwise, if Plop Pill was saying, stay salty to me... Bro, I ain't salty, and I'm only salty when I'm sweat, and I'm only sweaty when my wife and I make babies, but we don't need to get into that conversation. Now, onward and forward to more. This is going to be a ridiculously long video. Oh, I can't. Oh, thank God. Okay. Project Omnia. So as someone who wants... This was a... I, I really liked this comment. I really, really liked this one. This one was great. So as someone who once claimed the title libertarian as well as the ANCAP title, now identify as volunt uh, voluntarist, um, which I always think, like, if, we, if you're changing your titles, it's not necessarily that you're changing your beliefs. It's that, again, definitions are starting to get muddied up. But I'm not, I don't mean to inject here. I just had to throw that there. But um, I still think you're conflating a little bit on the libertarianism front. It is, is a common conflation. So libertarian is actually a philosophy based upon the non-aggression principle. That is not true. Libertarianism was not founded when the non-aggression principle was surmised in the, um, in the 20th century. The non-aggression principle came much later by people who... Um, they would actually were uh, partially anarchist, anti-government... Uh, and small government, but the, the non-aggression principle, no. Libertarianism uh, and the, the original idea of the libertarian was not founded in the non-aggression principle. Um, it, again, it was a, the, the first time I believe the term was used was by, it, it was an English paper in the, during that French Revolution in the 1790s, and they, they said that the, the French libertarians we're gathering. Oh, what the hell was the name of the paper? Anyway, you can look that up, but it was the first time that the word was like colloquially used. Okay. And then you look at, okay, well, what were they fighting for? What caused this movement to happen? And it was actually what we did here in America. The French were inspired by you know, what we did here. Um, so no, it, it, libertarianism is not based on the non-aggression principle project Omnia. Um, and I did respond to this one, but I felt that this was really important to talk about. Uh, and it's not just a political affiliation or tied directly to political parties and ideas. Again, that's also not particularly true. It was completely a political movement because the people who actually originated the idea of what a libertarian were were aggressively going in to get their politicians to drag them out to a aggressively get new politicians i need to be very careful but they aggressively got new politicians um so no um and the definition of the word again looking it up it's using dictionary definitions here does not encapsulate the non-aggression principle. This is an idea that has been injected into the libertarian movement. I, I, if somebody says, look, I'm a non-aggression libertarian, okay, but you have to hyphenate it. You can't just say libertarianism includes this because it didn't even come around until like 160 like years, years after the original libertarian movement. Okay, so one can be a libertarian uh, and be an and cap. Um, no, no, libertarians and anarcho-capitalists can run in the same direction, but again, an anarcho-capitalist 
if you're defining yourself that way with and the root of anarcho is anarch anarchist or anarchism which comes from which is somebody who practices anarchism okay if you're going in that direction okay um you want no government that is your goal you want no government so an anarcho capitalist is somebody again rooted in dictionary definitions here is somebody who practices or would like to have a society without a government and then uh, also have that society function with the morality and trustworthiness in order to engage in trade in a capitalist manner okay the, the, again going with the dictionary definitions here a lot of people don't like to do that the reason i say the dictionary definitions and not some philosophers definitions is we can't muddy the waters with language the left loves to do this and that's how they win because none of us can seem to agree on what we're talking about well i'm a libertarian well no you're not a libertarian i'm a, whenever you, you get a hundred libertarians in a room and they're all talking about the no true scotsman fallacy because it should be called the no true libertarian fallacy at this point because that's what it's like okay Trust that there has been much uh, infighting and civil discussion centered around this very topic with libertarian and really anti-authoritarian circles. 100% right there, Project Omnia. That's you absolutely correct, 100%. Um, and I, and I, I just I said that. Also, I would say the best way to describe what Eric July espouses is to say he calls for decentralization, which I believe he calls for decentralization in economic structures and the abolishment of governmental power structures that's one thing okay uh it calls for decentralization which would include hierarchical systems but decentralization down to the individual which again down to the individual anarchy we are eviscerating the government it wouldn't exist anymore i i don't have enough faith in humanity that we could actually have a system without some version of a government not to control us but a government literally as just the referees but we can't do that right like it, it, we for the the government in our system we have now was supposed to just kind of be like the referee make sure everybody plays fair and it didn't happen that way okay the decentralization in the economy i think is hugely important and that should be what's happening but the government is not allowing for decentralization allowing these megacorps to take over so i this is kind of what i wanted to say to project omnia uh, i just I, di I didn't have the time but no project omnia your comment made me have to work to think to process and make sure that i was able to correctly put into words what you were saying to me I've been thinking about it uh, and making sure that I could collect my words and my thoughts. I think you and I disagree on the definition of libertarian. I think you and I disagree on the roots of the word libertarian. However, I do think that both of us can probably agree that we need to run away from the direction that we are currently headed um, as far as government is concerned. All right, Daryl Hughes. Has anyone gotten a copy of this yet? Read it and knows if it is and knows if after all this cheering about it, it's even any good at $35 a copy for a 90 page for a 96 page book. It had better be fucking great. Uh, Daryl Hughes, you're not wrong. There's a lot of trust and support around Eric July right now. And I think a lot of people are really hoping that this book is good and that this book turns out the way that it needs to. I think a lot of people are there. Um, and that was from the Isom number one trailer reaction. Scott Be Beiser, Beezer? I'm going to say Beiser. If I'm getting it wrong, Scott, I do apologize. But again, I made a lot of people very confused about how I described the libertarian thing in the very first Eric July video that the does this matter one. Uh, what about political labels? Libertarian is an umbrella term that can include classical liberal, cyber liber, classical liberals, civil libertarians, left libertarians, taxation is theft types, voluntarists, anarcho-capitalists. I don't know where July is within the spectrum, but using the term libertarian doesn't mean he's changed his outlook. I would agree with a lot of that, except for the anarcho-capitalist and possibly 
the taxation is theft type. I've never been a taxation is theft person. Uh, I am a taxation without representation is theft person. Very, very distinct qualifier there. Now, is what they're doing today theft? Oh, yeah. It's not even close. It's absolutely theft because we're not getting represented. That's it. They go, well, what do you think they're doing now? Well, they're obviously not representing me and they're still taking my money. So that means, yeah. Uh, the taxation is theft types. I, mm, I, I, no, taxation without representation is theft. Uh, taxation in and of itself is not theft because originally we were supposed to be able to vote on taxes and agree that's what our money would go to. That's not theft. That's, you know, a community agreement, uh, which we no longer have. And we just get bullied around by these asshats. All right, YT Refugee, he's actually come back and commented on a few things even today. So thank you so much, YT Refugee. I really hope you see this. I want to highlight your comment because, um, uh, yeah, I did have to clarify a lot of things, and I'm going to continue to clarify those things as much as I can. Appreciate the clarification. I've listened to Eric's ideas for a long time. He doesn't so much advocate for abolishing the government, but decentralizing which I happen to completely agree with and which is more in line with the U.S. founded principles. You should really catch some of his videos over the years. He supports de decentralized local and self-governance and the anarcho-capitalism that he advocates for is uh, more his economic philosophy. He uh, really, he is pretty knowledgeable and uh, enlightening guy and an enlightening guy. Uh, no, that's I do watch uh, Ripa. I've watched Ripa since I want to say it was Captain Marvel. Question mark. I think it was the Captain. Yeah, I think it was Captain Marvel, because that was terrible. But yeah, so I think it was around that. And then I just kind of, you know, he wasn't like an everyday watch for me. And then after uh, the lockdowns hit, oh boy, <laughs> him computing forever, uh, also known as Dave Cullen, which he's, uh, you know, the Black Pigeon Speaks, Felix Rex. Um, yeah. They were all pretty much daily watches for me. Uh, I go to Odyssey right now and subscribe to... Uh, computing forever because and oh by the way we do have an odyssey channel but yeah uh computing forever um i'm yeah yep all right and let's keep going here all right yaira commented on the uh no time travel no multiverse this was this was fun and this turned into a very long exchange that was still going today hey look at that a beer materialized it's almost like I totally didn't stop the video and then start recording again and get a beer. Shh. You know nothing. It's called a drink with crazy shut up. That's how we started the channel. If time travel, multiverses, and infinite possibilities exist, what's the tension? If your main character dies or whatever and is still popular, they'll show up in another story and episode later. Ripper versus doing right, a comprehensive timeline. Now this, go to this, this whole exchange, there are some great people here. Uh, there seems to be an error, and Yaira went back um, for quite a, a, a lot, so there seems to be an error, and Yaira, both thank you guys for checking out the channel and having that awesome exchange. I literally follow, I like, if it's, I haven't seen a comment uh, still going, but if you guys are still going, like, I... Just such a great conversation was had there. Um, if I can interject a little bit, I think uh, there seems to be an error was leaning towards the side of like one shots, you know, like what? Uh, well, my killing joke is up there and there's no version of me standing up right now without crushing a doggo because I have a doggo down here. Um but no, the killing joke was in, it was supposed to be just a one-off story, had no connection to the other stuff, and if somebody licensed it out, I think he was kind of leaning more towards that. Yaira was saying straight up, no, no multiverses, no alternate stories. Um, I think one shots are okay, but do you think by incorporating a one shot, Eric July could go down like the slippery slope fallacy, where like all of a sudden it's canon? And anyway. Let's keep going. 
KOG, I personally think it's putting limitations on his future work. Play on words. I believe what you said about knowing they will use this uh, from the beginning can make a huge difference. The one movie I can think of that I enjoyed the time travel aspect in was 12 Monkeys. There are others, I just can't think of them now. 12 Monkeys is definitely an interesting time travel movie. In this one, I referenced uh, for multiverses and time travel. I talked about, uh, obviously, the quintessential time travel movie, which is Back to the Future. And then one of my favorite multiverse movies is The One. Um, fantastic. Loved it. The, I love The One with Jet Li. It's great. Uh, the Biv came back to say, quality costs money. Got you subbed. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. Thank you. I just wanted to point that out. You know, a repeat, a repeat offender to the channel to drink with crazy. Thank you. Khalil Royal. Damn, bro. This video is crazy powerful. My guy, I agree with you 100%. Sadly, I'm struggling right now and uh, looking for another job, but that doesn't mean I can't find the extra cash to help support his comic book company. Hopefully, whenever I uh, do find extra, I know where to spend it versus all the other woke nonsense in the world. Could Leo Royal, you keep up with the channel and you let us know when you find that job, when you're, when you find that thing, you know, and I know there's a, a, a huge community online of people. Maybe there's people in your area you can connect with and, you know, like the geeks and gamers, Ripa verse that whole world that, um, yeah, man, I don't know. Maybe those guys can help you find a job. You know, there's gotta be, we all got to stick together, right? We're all in this together. We're, and when I say that, like, I'm not saying that as some commie shit. Like, I'm saying, like, we need to get rid of that stuff. But all of us as individuals need to just start walking in that direction to help people out. Because we can all do it individually. And then when our stops come up, we say, all right, bye, I'm out. Like, you guys keep going. But this is where I stop. But yeah, Khalil Royal, thank you so much for checking out the channel. Thank you so much for commenting. And I, I do hope that you, uh, you're able to get where you need to be financially. I've, I've been in bad places before and I'm not exactly in the best place now. I mean, I'm not like in a bad place, but you know, times are tough for everybody right now, man. So goodwill to you, man. Hope you get what you're going for. Kim J. I draw a lot and created my own stuff, but I can never get to that level of having a comic. My work sucks. Kim J. I, you said you've been, later in the comments, you said you've been working on stuff for 29 years. I would say that you're, you probably just got to find the right story to go with your art. I mean, unless like all you can do is stick figures. And even then you can probably still find somebody who could write a story for your art that fits the style, right? Like, I mean, look at some of the singers we had in the last century. They all sucked at singing, but there were major freaking hits. They had corporation money backing them, but even still, like, everybody's got a style that can fit somewhere. So I bet you could pull it off, man. All right, this one here is what made me want to do this. Bam Bam NJ. This one here was a good one. And we had a further exchange, and Bam Bam was incredibly respectful. And I appreciate him for being him, her, I'm not sure. But he's got that old, uh, um, cartoons. Hanna-Barbera, Hanna-Barbera cartoon style going on in his thumbnail. He was incredibly respectful later on, but I did strike a chord with him, and I wanted to read this one, and I really, this is the one that has stuck with me for, for days. <clears throat> nice story about the minimum wage. Too bad it's all bunk. First minimum wage effort started in Australia, and the earnest, earliest minimum wage laws in the United States were state laws focused on women and children, which occurred in the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Had absolutely nothing to do with darker-skinned people, so now that I know... You are full of shit. I won't be listening to any more of your BS. Now, I explained to Bam Bam NJ that, look, if I got something wrong, please let me know. What I was referring to in uh, the Rip Reverse Prices Too High video was a Cato Institute research paper that they, I want to say it was 2019, 
that they came out with uh, talking about the racial roots uh, or, or the racist roots of the Davis Bacon law that is federal law now, which is the um, prevailing wage act and all that. Um, so I did misspeak a little bit here on this one. And I do apologize that it didn't get its roots. Um, I have not had time to look this up, but I will take it on faith that Bam Bam is probably more accurate in that the roots of minimum wage laws um, were not, in fact, racist. Uh, I was referring to the federal law that swept over the land in the 1930s. Uh, that did have some uh, racist roots to it. So uh, to Bam Bam MJ, I was wrong. Uh, the roots weren't in uh, racism for minimum wage laws. Uh, it wasn't until later that they used things like that uh, for racist intentions. Um, but a mistake is a mistake regardless. I'm not defending it at all. I was wrong. I was referencing a Cato Institute article. I said that the roots were there. Uh, the roots weren't there. That's my bad. That's my fault. That 100%. I, I was wrong. Um, history, there, there's a lot to learn about the world. And... I don't know at all. I don't, I can't, I've trust me. I'd like to, but, and a lot of times like there's information that I'll have and I'll mix two parts of some things together, which I think is what happened here in the video. And I didn't mean to, um, and I mixed two parts of history together. Um, so I got that wrong too. Uh, cause I had to go, but had Bam Bam not called me out, I would not have checked myself. So I appreciate it, Bam Bam and Jay. Um, I really do hope that you're uh, you came back to the channel and check some stuff out. And I even let you know, like, I'd really like you to stick around and call me on my bullshit because the more people do that, the better I become. Right? Be great. That's what Eric July has been saying lately. So uh, that's something I believe personally for a long time. So yeah, Bam Bam and Jay, you. And thank you for the exchange that you had with me after this uh, comment as well. Jason Static. I love time travel and the concept of time travel, but they shouldn't be used for cheap cop-outs or writing, or, or writing and should have specific purposes, rules of engagements, and cause and effect in the use of it. Umbrella Academy, I feel, use... Uses time travel good in a few ways. The rest of the story is shit, but that's besides the point. In Umbrella Academy, there in Umbrella Academy, there's a cause and effect. <clears throat> uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's bad uh, more than it's good in most times. I absolutely agree. I I really don't like a lot of time travel shenanigans. It's what ruined Endgame for me. I definitely hate Endgame, and uh, hopefully we can. Um, It'd be cool to see some fun time travel movies, though. Like, they're not done very often, and when they are done, they're not done very well, so. G33X. Time travel is indeed really done well, and I was... And I was going to say, I agree with Back to the Future being a good case for it. The cool thing about that movie franchise is that it's built a... It's built around it and doesn't overstay its welcome. When you're dealing with long-running franchise... Um, it gets really hard to handle time travel antics and multiverses. It turns to the kind of wiggle room that makes a brand kind of diluted, like a tiny scoop of Kool-Aid in a giant pitcher of water. Uh, uh, you lose the flavor that uh, makes that drink or series enjoyable. You seem like a chill, genuine guy, though, and I hope to see your channel continue to grow. G33X, you are still commenting on the channel to this day. Thank you so much for leaving this comment. Again, <laughs> there's so many people out there who are so much smarter than I am and can illustrate stuff in a much more concise way than I can. Like, literally everybody that I've been reading and all the people that I haven't been reading. <laughs> like, seriously... And you guys came here and you checked it out. Thank you. <laughs> it's so awesome. All right, this one here. Matty Dubs. What a stupid video title. What's the point? What's the point of making a comic book? Fun to create, to bring new readers into the hobby, which he is doing. Anyone crying about the Ripper versus pretty much is a pretty man baby, by the way. Eric's Isom number one has um, 
reviled DC and Marvel rivaled rivaled how the hell did I read that as reviled rival DC and Marvel's sales already so anyone hating on him can go suck it and seethe on Twitter yeah pretty much um also um what's the point like I think because I was literally getting to like the point of the parallel economy like what's the point of him doing this because he wanted to do this and be a part of the parallel and like build a parallel be a part of building a parallel economy like I've watched Eric for long enough to know that like he does a lot of this because you know he wants another place to go for people which intrinsically is part of the building the economy so when I said what's the point a lot of people read that as dismissive I really didn't mean it that way it's graphic novel size so the price warrants how big the pages are says Lucas Garrett I was glad to pay it. I'm done with the nonsense coming from Marvel and DC since 2016. The last Marvel book I purchased was The Ultimates, led by Black Panther and Blue Marvel. That was six years ago. Haven't been back since the subpar writing of Ta-Nehisi Coates and uh, Nick Spencer, who pretty much neutered the Black Panther and Captain America. Those two can go where the sun don't shine. Eric July is bringing back the hunger for good storytelling in comic books, and I look forward to reading this book when it's delivered to my doorstep in August. Lucas Garrett, absolutely, and you had a really fantastic exchange with me uh, in the comments below this one, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Uh, thank you for checking this out, um, and I really do appreciate it. All right, this is one of the ones I want to have fun with. Bird. Bird says, so instead of just removing political shit, he's decided to replace one political group's ideology with another's and made it more political by making it the main selling point. How is this different? It's the same shit, but with a different political group's belief in it. Uh, well, Eric said that he wasn't going to make his book political, so yeah. Uh, and I also had a further exchange with Bird, and basically what he's saying is Eric July is a sellout, and he's just going to do the same stuff, and that he's just grifting on his people, and um, he's basically going to be guilty of the things that he's complained about doing. So, To shorten that one down, you guys can go read this. This is on the Eric July, the Ripperverse, and What's the Point video. Bird. So go read that, and uh, if you guys go back and you guys do decide to comment to other people, be civil about it, Okay. Um, because here's the thing, I have control of the channel, and I don't like to deal with drama and bullshit. So, stay civil about it in my comments section. Now, if I start getting live streams going, and you guys start wanting to get, like, Nick Ricada levels of retarded down there, I ain't gonna stop you. But on my videos, I'm kind of drawing that line. I wanna, I wanna, uh, I will censor the shit out of some stuff on there, because live stream comments kind of disappear with the times. And I don't need people coming back and getting salty about some shit that was said like five fucking years ago. Like, I don't know. That's just where I'm at. I just don't want to be like reminded of it. I don't know. I don't know. That's where I'm at. Super Neil Comics. I'm looking forward to more content from you. I hope you highlight comments. I am highlighting comments. And I just highlighted yours. And this video is going to be ridiculously long. Holy crap. And I've, I, 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 I literally have to skip everything. Like... I literally have to skip. I feel like this is what answering super chats would be like. Like with the people that just get like a ridiculous amount. Because I'm already like 40 minutes in. And like there's a lot here. But I also am scrolling and I can't highlight everybody guys. I'm sorry. I wish I could. Um, this video would be like seven hours long to do that. And I have children upstairs that I have to get to. And they're being very good for me right now thankfully. So there's an asleep doggo down here too that I have to also attend to. So that being said, let's keep going. All right. I do have to point this one out. Just get rid of the bobbleheads on your wall, LOL. <laughs> so he's talking about, uh, we actually have a couple of pop figures here. Now, this is my Vegeta. My wife bought this for me. She knew years ago before I even, I just got her into Dragon Ball like literally this month and she, and she can't put it down. She's she's gone through Dragon Ball Z. She's almost done with uh, all of the. I don't know if she's quite up to Kid Buu yet. She might be close to Gotenks arc. I think she's close to the Gotenks arc. Um, but she knew that I liked Vegeta, 
she knows that Vegeta is my favorite character and she was walking through the store and saw this and she goes, I want, and she bought it and she goes, I don't really know if you like figures like that, but I know that you like Vegeta, so I bought him for you. So it's on my fucking wall because my wife fucking bought it for me. Uh, we also have an Alice Cooper there uh, that's also a pop figure that my wife got because she likes the pop figures. And then we also have uh, uh, Peace of Mind Eddie. My wife's favorite band is Iron Maiden. So <clears throat> Eddie from Iron Maiden is up there as well. So the bobbles on the wall are from my wife. This one especially means a lot to me because it was a gift from her that she just was walking through a store and got for me. Um, and again, now I have my super awesome Vegeta poster that I am totally, it's, it's going up here as soon as I get a frame. I'm getting a frame for this thing this fucking weekend. It's gonna be great. So anyway, 2A Oregon boy. Ooh, 2A Oregon boy. Hmm. You and I should have some conversations, 2A Oregon boy. You can find me over at Twitter at a drink with Kraz one, a drink with crazy, a drink with Kraz one. So basically, it's like crazy, but without the Y at the end and with a literally a numerical one. We should talk to a Oregon boy. I dig that name. Let's continue. All right, Super Neil Comics again, and like fifteen people have literally said this to me at this point, and I feel like a retard. <laughs> Because I, I haven't been able to catch a lot of Ripa's streams lately. Well, he pulls them down, and I don't have the money to be a member. I don't. So if I don't catch Ripa live, like I try to catch his videos that he puts up. Super Neil Comics. Maybe he will go with West African mythology because this was the gods, demons, and creatures. Because on uh, Critical Drinkers Open Bar number twenty, which is up now, because I just posted it. Um. A super chat came in asking Rip if he was going to do mythology in his or any mythological characters in his book. Rip was like, yeah, you know, there might be something in his first book. You never know. You're going to have to pick up the first book to find out. Maybe not. Maybe he is. I don't know. And that's kind of how he said it. Uh, you can go watch it on, on Critical Drinker's channel just to verify that I'm not, like, you know, shooting you guys full of shit. But, um, and everybody, like 15 other people. Well, maybe not like 15 because I'm not that popular. But, like, more people than I deserve to have comment on this channel. We're like, he's probably going to go with this. And the reason he's going to go with this. And they lay it out so well. And I'm like, wow, I'm a moron. I was so focused on, like, the Romans and the Greeks and wondering if he could do that. And I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but, yeah. So, the West African mythology. The Notorious Yim. This was another one. He has the one white character with braids. He could be a Norse warrior with magic ability given by a god. So there's that. In one of Ripa's streams, he talked about how DC and Marvel don't explore too deep into African god pantheon. I'm an idiot because I didn't know this. And it, like you guys could literally just start off with dude, bro, you're dumb. Because that might be language that I could could read. <laughs> He might bring that idea into the fold. Eric also mentioned death will be a big thing, which makes me wonder if we're introduced to some type of God figure, how will death play a role? Eric said if a major character dies, they stay dead permanent. I did think that that was a thing, but like obviously people are totally schooling me. Thank you for watching the video. I had I just I didn't even think about god pantheons that weren't like in my little like purview right um because when I think of the god pantheons I think of you know the Norse obviously the Romans and the Greeks and then um uh, the Japanese ones I've looked into I can thank Ghost of Tsushima for that and a little bit into the Chinese uh god pantheon and then obviously you have like the Buddhist and Hindu stuff too but like I, I didn't even think about West African stuff because I'm an idiot. Thank you guys for pointing it out. I appreciate you. All right. I do want to point this one out. Uh, Lucas Garrett, I already read one of his, uh, but I just, I really, really liked how he, man, this is just such a good, and I'm going to read the whole thing. If you guys, you guys won't be able to see it here on the screen, but I'm going to read this whole freaking thing. And the reason I'm not going to read the whole thing on the screen is because I will jack it up if I start moving it right now. Lucas Garrett came back and commented on the time travel and multiverse. As I've gotten older, my thoughts on time travel and multiverses 
uh, multiverse concepts have changed both in practicality and believability. When I was coming up, characters like Marvel's Bishop and Cable and the Dragon Ball Z's Trunks both thrilled and fascinated me. I'm sorry, there's there's a cat over there that just okay. I apologize, Lucas. I'll get let's get back to it. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. The thing is, all three characters could have made the changes they needed to make in their own time as opposed to going back to change things. In fact, I'm reading a fan uh, made... Uh, I'm going to screw this word up. Dojinshi? 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 I'm going to have to make a correcting my mistakes video on that word called Dragon Ball after Gohan X Trunks, where the events of the history of Trunks is altered and Gohan lived, trained Trunks to become Super Saiyan, and the two last Z, fires, Z fighters deal with the threats of the android cell and boo in their own time at the end of the day time travel is wish fulfillment i understand the wish to change tragic events and save loved ones only god has that kind of power i don't have that power and here's the thing is if you change something in the past there will be a price down the road there will be a price down the road it's equivalent exchange of energy Save dad in the past, you might lose mom. See Frequency, starring Jim Caviezel and Dennis Quaid. Or better yet, just watch the original Butterfly Effect movie starring Aston Kutcher and Amy Smart. Both of those are fucking fantastic movies. I cannot believe I didn't think of that. Dude, Frequency did a play on time travel, and it was more like time communication, but like how it could... Oh, it was great. Oh, it was great. It was like... It dealt with, like, time... But not time travel, but like time alteration. Oh, it's fantastic. Anyway, frequency was great. Mm. Butterfly Flex was great. All that being said, I understand why Eric chose not to allow elements of time travel and multiverse concepts to be present in the Ripperverse because actions have consequences, uh, long-term consequences, and they cannot be deviated in any way. Thanks for making this video. Lucas Garrett, thank you so much for commenting again. And I just loved that. I, I mean, you broke it down so well. You gave fantastic uh, characters and movies to reference there. Absolutely great. Absolutely great. Resistance Publishing. I have a theory about the Ripperverse. The introduction of the creepy character with the deep voice at the end of his promo clip started the wheels turning in my imagination. I think Isom is an angel or a god or something of the kind. We would call those a Nephilim if they're a crossbreed. Or demigod. Uh, something of the kind. And the creepy character has turned his attention to Isom after he reveals himself once again. The character and their names don't give off the typical superhero vibes to me. I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about the superheroes having an origin that was godly. I didn't even think about that. Could they be descendants of demigods? That would be cool. That would be cool. Oh, that would be... All right. All right. And one of the last comments that I will cover in this video, because there is too much to do. I may have to start... I don't know. I'm going to have to like live stream to keep up with you guys or something. I don't know. And like, I'm not monetized or anything, so like, I wouldn't be getting super chats or anything like that. But like, I just may have to do this. But Dead End, forty nine ninety one. As soon as I heard about this, I immediately thought to myself, PayPal is in contact with someone that is trying to stop Riffa from being successful. It's criminal, and it might be a good idea to file a lawsuit. So this was an extra spicy take for me. Uh, PayPal really pissed me off because I actually went through them to purchase my Eric July stuff. Boy, howdy. Mm, man, that grinded my gears. Oh, man, that grinded my gears so bad. So, uh, but thank you so much, Dead End 4991, for commenting. Guys, this video is going to be a beast for me to edit. So, I'm going to cut it here. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I would really like. Let me know. I wanted to highlight you guys because. 
man, you made this thing that I'm doing feel fantastic. You guys made this thing that I'm doing feel special. And, you know, like it's bigger than me, because I think it is. And so I want to highlight you guys as much as I can. So thank you so much for this. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. And I will see you all next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.